Welcome back everybody. Now we've got a working chat GPT powered bot that will answer our questions and act as basically any expert on the planet. It's pretty cool. In this lesson, I'm gonna take you through cleaning up the dashboard page and making it our own. So let's start by updating the logo. Now our logo is actually on a page called app header, which is a component on the home page. So the changes we make to the app header page will automatically display on our home page because it's a component. So I'm gonna click on the image and I think I wanna use another image that's already in this project template. I like these images. I think they fit really well for an AI product. So I'm gonna pick this purple one here. Now that thing is giant. So we do need to change the size on it. If we go over to styling, actually I'll zoom in a little bit here. So the image class, has a width of 100%. And the styling on this header has the logo container at a specific width. But I don't really want it to take up 100%, so I'm just gonna remove this style class. Now that's gonna default back to the width of the actual image, which looks like it was even bigger. So I'm gonna reduce the size by using some inline styling. I'll go to the size area, and I'm just gonna change the width to 100 pixels. Let's see how that looks. I think that's still a little too big. Let's go with 60 pixels. I think that's a little bit better. We can also go to the preview anytime to see how it looks for real. So I'm gonna jump over to the preview. I kind of like that. It's pretty big, but I like that it stands out some. Great, so back in the studio. Now we have a much nicer logo for our app. Let's move on to the next thing. So this conversation project has us creating conversation records and messages records in builder data collections. So I wanna set some user level restrictions on those collections to restrict access to only the people who have actually created the conversations and messages. For security purposes, we really don't want people to be able to access each other's conversations and messages. So we'll start in conversations. I'm gonna to go to collection settings and I'll enable user restrictions. And we're gonna change the access type to be owner creator only. And what that means is that only the creator of the record can actually retrieve the record from the database. So then by default, no one will be able to access anyone else's data that they create. Now you being the creator of the project will have access to all the records that are created by any of your end users inside of this conversations collection. But each independent user will only have access to the ones that they created themselves. So I'm gonna close this and we're gonna do the exact same setup on messages. So we'll go to collection settings, enable user restrictions, change the access type to owner creator only. All right, so now that we've restricted that access, we also want to allow our users to create new conversations. So I'm gonna insert a new button into my left panel here. I'll just drop it below this repeating list. Click in it and give it a name. And then we'll go to the events tab and on click, we're gonna make a new flow. And our new flow will be called new conversation. And in this flow, we need to add an action to create a new conversation record. So we'll add an action and we'll type create record. We'll select our create record action. And this action in Builder, it creates a new record inside of the selected data collection. So we want to select conversations. And then we can map any fields that we'd like as default. If we don't map any fields, it'll just create a blank record, which is no problem. You could leave it like that. But I'm actually going to create a default name. And then the value to place into the name field, I actually want a static value. I don't want to bring it from an element or anywhere else. So I'm just going to change that to text as my input type. And then we'll just type new conversation. So now when this flow runs, it'll create a new record using this action in the conversations data collection, and it'll have a name of new conversation. Now new records in builder data collections automatically know who the user was that created that record. So with our user restrictions we put on the data collection, the filtering will be automatic to where people only get to see the conversations they've created. Now, when a data record gets created into a collection, it's not going to automatically refresh any lists that are displayed on the page. So we do need to tell it to refresh the list. In order to do that, 
I'm going to nest what's called the page binding flow. I'm also going to tell it to wait. So now it will create the record and then run the page binding. And the page binding flow exists on every page in your builder project. And what that does is it reruns any data setup on any elements on the current page. So in our case, we have the data set up on our repeating list to come from the conversations collection. So it's going to automatically rerun this data setup, which is going to find the new conversation that was created when the user clicked the button. I think I'll move this button up to the top so that it's above the repeating list. So now let's see what this looks like in our preview. And I'll just click new conversation. And there we have our new conversation. I can click on it to open it up. So next, let's make a few more cleanup changes to this dashboard page. So on the left here, when we click on one of these, I think it should remain selected. So it should show you which one is selected here, even after I move my mouse off of it. We'll also make it to where when I refresh the page, it selects the very top one. So automatically when we come in, nutrition would be selected. And then we should also change the sort order of our repeating list to keep the most recent conversation at the top. All right, let's go back in the studio and do those three things. We're already on our repeating list. So let's go ahead and set a sort order. I'm gonna tell it to sort it by the created date time, but I'm gonna sort it descending so that the most recent one is at the top. Now, if we go back to the preview, we can see we now have them in order of creation. So now let's go back to the studio and make it so that the most recent conversation opens up automatically whenever the page loads. So in the studio, we're going to do that work on the row of the conversation. So this is the display page that displays inside of our repeating list. And what I need to do is put some conditional logic on this row when the page loads to see if it's the first one. And if it is the first one, then go ahead and open. So remember, we already have a flow on this page for open conversation. We run that whenever the user clicks on the row. So we don't need to recreate any of that. All we need to do is determine whether or not this is the first row in the list. So to do that, I'm going to go into the page load flow. The page load flow automatically runs anytime the page is loaded. So when it first loads into the UI, it's going to run through this page load flow. So any action you put in here will automatically run. I'm going to add an action in here. I'll search for logic. We're going to use this if then logic check action. This action compares any two values and then runs flows based on the outcome of a logic check. So in our case, we're going to check to see if it's the first row. And if it is, we'll run the open conversation flow. So that way, if it's the first one, it will automatically open the conversation. If it's not the first one, then it won't do anything at all. So the way to determine if it's the first row in a repeating list is to use a default variable that's added automatically to every single repeating list row. So I'm going to change my logic test. Instead of having a static value for our input in our logical test, I'm going to pull from a variable on the current page. And the variable we're looking for is called underscore array index. And this variable will exist on every single repeating list item in Builder. An array index is the position of an item inside of a list. So you can think of an array as a list of things and the index as its position. And in programming, the very first one is always zero. So if I have these three in this list, it would be zero, one, two. So the very first one will be zero. So what our logical check is doing is seeing if our array index equals zero. If it is zero, then it will open the conversation. If it's not zero, then it won't do anything in this case because we're leaving the else, the flow to run if false, empty. So let's go back to our preview and refresh the page and it should automatically open our conversation. So we'll refresh and there we go. We've automatically opened our conversation. All right, so the last thing we're gonna to do to the dashboard is make it so that when one of these is opened, it remains with this styling applied to it. So let's go look at how that styling is set up, and then we can make it remain applied if that conversation is opened. 
So we're going to remain on our conversation row. And I'm going to go look at our outer element, styling. This style class came with the template. And it looks like there's a hover state on it. If we go look at the hover state, we have border and outline, and we also have some custom properties. If we want, we can go take a look at those properties all together and see just the ones that have been used in our used props area. So in here, we can see we have a linear gradient background image, a border left, and a padding left. I can also view this as CSS and see how the code looks. It's the exact same information, no matter which view you're in. So if I go and look at border and outline, I can see the same exact setup. Border left, solid. Same thing as if I go in here, border left, solid. Same as CSS, border left, two pixels solid. So what we want to do is make it so that these style properties are applied when one is selected and removed when they're not selected. So what I'll do is go to the CSS and I'm going to copy it. I don't need the selector here. That's just for the hover state. But I do need background image, border left, and padding left. So I'm just going to copy those. And then I'll go back to our main styling tab. And we're going to use a utility class because utility classes override the primary style class. And we can easily apply and remove utility classes from our different rows. So I'll add a new utility class and we'll give it a name. We'll go into our new utility class into CSS, and I'm going to paste my copied CSS. And I'll save those changes. So now our selected class is applied to every row. We don't want it that way by default. So what I'll do is go back and remove it. And then what we're going to do is create two new flows that add and remove our utility class from our outer container. So I'll make two new flows that run to set the state as selected or not selected. So I'll go to flows and add a new flow named selected equals yes. And we'll make a second new flow selected equals no. In our selected equals yes flow, we'll add an action that adds a style class. In this action, we're going to select the style class to add, which is our app list item selected class that we just created. And we're going to apply that class to an element, which is our outer div. And then we're going to do the opposite in the selected no. We're going to add a new action that removes a style class. We'll select the same class because we want to remove it, same element to remove it from. So the last step is in our open conversation action. When this conversation is opened, we want to nest in our selected equals yes. And we also want to add another action called run flow on page. The run flow on page action will execute a flow on other pages. And in our case, we actually want to execute a flow on our conversation row and the flow that we want to run is selected no, but we want to run it on all of the conversation rows that are not the current one. So what this means is that when this action runs, it will go out to every other conversation row and remove the style class to make it look not selected. And it will set the one that we clicked on to selected yes. So let's go back to our preview and try it out. So now if I click on one, it remains selected. If I click on another one, it selects that one and removes that style class from the other rows. So now the user can easily see which one they're in. All right, so that's it for the dashboard cleanup. In the next lesson, we're going to do some cleanup to the conversation page. Thanks for watching.